you're looking to understand how to deliver exceptional IT services, you've come to the right place. ITIL 4 is the most widely accepted approach to service management in the world. It's a holistic and practical approach to service management, and it ensures that organizations can adapt and thrive in a dynamic environment. At its heart, there are seven guiding principles. These are recommendations that guides an organization in all circumstances, regardless of changes in its goals, strategies, type of work, or management structure. And a guiding principle is universal and enduring. Here are seven things you need to know about ITIL 4. Everything the organization does should be linked to value for stakeholders. Value is defined from the customer's perspective. Services and processes should meet their needs and expectations. Fundamentally, all activity should link back to value for itself, its customers and stakeholders. When focusing on value, the first steps are crucial. Who is being served and what is their perspective of value? You need to understand your customers and their needs. When you understand this, you can better understand what your customers value most. And the customer experience is of utmost value. The customer experience will determine the way they feel about your products, services and organisation. But this has a joint meaning. Customer experience can be used to explain the transactional experience between customers and businesses. On the other hand, it can be a very subjective issue. For example, one customer might love your online platform, whereas another may not. Ultimately, you need to understand customer needs and what they value. You need to align all activities and processes with value creation. Then you need to continually evaluate and measure value to enhance relevance and effectiveness. Assess your current state objectively and do this before you start building anything new. Because to move forward on your ITIL journey, you must first be able to assess the strengths and weaknesses of your current state. In the process of eliminating the old and the unsuccessful, there can often be a great temptation to strip out everything and build something completely new. But this is rarely wise or necessary. Not only can this be an incredibly wasteful approach, but you can also run the risk of removing useful or value-adding elements by taking such a broad strokes approach. Take an incremental approach, but don't start over without first considering what is already available to be leveraged. With something new, there's always the temptation to jump in feet first, but resist, yes. A new system is exciting, it's only natural that you want to feel its full impact immediately. However, implementing any kind of change comes with challenges. By attempting too much too soon, you risk intensifying these challenges. Initiatives should be accomplished iteratively. Breaking down targets into smaller and more manageable sections will ease the process of change. It will also go a long way to making your teams feel more productive. Rather than sitting on top of a never-ending list with no visible signs of progress, your teams will be working through the initiatives with a sense of accomplishment and achievement. A collaborative culture will always yield the most positive outcomes. When teams work together, without hidden agendas, without boundaries and with the right people in the right roles, the chance of success is high. But understand that collaboration does not mean consensus. Organisations that become concerned with gaining consensus on everything try to make everyone happy and inevitably end up either doing or achieving very little. Collaboration across teams and departments enhances synergy and ensures everyone is aligned with common goals. Share information transparently to build trust and alignment and you'll quickly foster a culture of teamwork and open communications. No single service, practice or process is an island. Consider the organisation as a whole, recognising the interdependencies between various parts and understanding how the various components of an organisation interact. By taking this holistic approach to service management, you can better understand how all the parts of an organisation work together in an integrated way, while actively working to break down silos. Remember, in a complex system, the alteration of one element can impact another for good or bad. 
when it comes to altering elements. You can't just think about that one piece as a singularity. You need to consider how even one small change can cause a ripple effect and impact the wider organisation. Everything is interconnected. Everything comes with cause and effect. Striving for simplicity in processes and solutions sounds easy, but it's often harder than it looks. Practical solutions are easier to implement and maintain, but sometimes it's all too easy to fall into a pattern of overcomplication. One of the best ways to combat this is to take an outcome-based approach to planning and delivery. When you approach a challenge by first considering the outcomes, it produces practical solutions that deliver valuable outcomes. Try to focus on achieving your desired outcome, but with minimal complexity. Work to simplify and optimise your work streams using clear and definable metrics and take an iterative process and you'll soon find that you're working simply and practically. Optimization and automation can be the keys to efficiency and effectiveness. By optimising processes and leveraging automation, organisations can reduce manual effort and increase consistency. Technology helps organisations scale and manage frequent time-consuming tasks. This frees up time for far more complex, creative or strategic decision-making. But before you take on automation, you need to optimise. If you automate a process which hasn't been optimised, any existing issues or deficiencies will only worsen. So automation for automation's sake should be discouraged because technology cannot be solely relied upon without the capability for human intervention. And when we automate for the sake of it, it can often reduce organisational robustness and resilience. Automation will not fix a broken or inefficient process. So, there we have it, the seven guiding principles of ITIL 4. By following these guiding principles, you can navigate the complexities of service management, enhance your capabilities, and consistently deliver value to your customers and stakeholders. As always, we love to hear your thoughts and experiences in the comments. ITIL 4 can open up a world of opportunity for you. You can start your journey by following the links in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for more helpful ITIL4 content.